Welcome to JetBlue Park at Fenway South. The Red Sox continue their Grapefruit League schedule. The Baltimore Orioles come to Fort Myers. Hi again, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo, as always, joined by Jerry Remy. Welcome to Red Sox Baseball. Well, tonight, Felix Dubron's on the mound for the Red Sox. And, of course, Jerry, last year, he made the team and was in the rotation to begin the year. Well, the first year being a starting pitcher in the big leagues, and, of course, uh, about 161 innings for Dubron a, a year ago, made 29 starts, and admitted at the end of the year that he was fatigued. Now, that should not be the case in the second year. What he did is he went home and he rushed it, but a little too much because he came to spring training out of shape and got kind of a lecture from Pedro Martinez about that. The advantage for Dubron, though, is the fact that this is a longer spring training, so he had time to do some physical activity, get himself back into shape and back on the mound, getting ready to make his second start tonight for the Boston Red Sox. So Felix Dubron on the mound tonight, and in the cleanup spot, offensively for the Red Sox, Mike Napoli has been playing some good first base defensively for the Red Sox, and offensively, we all know what he can do. A couple of home runs already for Napoli. He's in the cleanup spot when we come back to Jet Poo Park at Fenway South. Today. Red Sox Spring Training Baseball on Nesson is presented to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Well, nice night here tonight in Fort Myers as the Red Sox are back home at JetBlue Park at Fenway South to take on the Orioles tonight. And a very special night here tonight, uh, Jenny, at JetBlue Park. Don, it's a special weekend here at JetBlue Park. A group from the Jimmy Fund has come down to Fort Myers for their annual spring training trip. And after many delays, 12 hours of travel, they arrived this morning at 5 a.m. 38 kids and 20 doctors, nurses, and staff members all making this very possible here today. And they spent the day floating around in the lazy river, jumping around in the pool, going down the water slide, having just a ball in the sunshine. And this afternoon, they had time to spend with the Red Sox players, getting pictures and autographs, and are enjoying tonight's game from a suite here at JetBlue Park. And Don, the groom will also be taking batting practice at JetBlue tomorrow. It's a special trip for all of those involved. I know they look forward to it every year, and we look forward to seeing them every year here at JetBlue Park. And back down here again. It seemed like last year there also was a delay. It seems like the weather has not been kind, but certainly happy to be here tonight. We're glad to have them with us as the Red Sox take the field tonight led by their starter Felix Dubron. Let's check out the visiting Baltimore Orioles starting nine. The visiting Orioles brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Their lineup has Alexei Casilla leading it off at shortstop with Luke Ford in center field. Nolan Reimold is a DH batting third with Connor Jackson in right field. Steve Pierce is in left field. Russ Kanzler at third base bat sixth with Danny Valencia at first base batting seventh. Yamiko Navarro, former Red Sox, he'll be at second base batting eighth and another 
former Red Sox catcher Luis Exposito doing the catching tonight for the O's. He bats ninth and on the mound tonight for the Red Sox. Felix Dubrant last year 29 games 11 and 10 making the rotation out of spring training last year. 4.86 earned run average for him and had 167 K's last year as 161 innings more than he had started any previous year and of course had been a reliever in the past so a little bit overextended last year and this year trying to get in condition to get ready for the season and making his second appearance of the spring. The Red Sox defense tonight will have Will Biddlebrooks at third base, Jose Iglesias the shortstop, Brock Holt at second, and Mike Napoli the first baseman, left to right, Johnny Gomes, Jackie Bradley Jr., and Mitch Meyer, and Jared Saltalamacchia doing the catching for Dubron. Tim Timmons has a plate tonight for the umpires. Bob Davidson at first base, Jeff Kellogg at second base, and Travis Carlson is the umpire at third. Another nice night here tonight in Fort Myers. Light breeze out towards right center field. And the Red Sox wearing their red uniforms tonight. Getting ready to take on the Baltimore Orioles who last year got to the postseason. And tonight of Alexei Casilla leading it off for Buck Showalter who did such a fabulous job last year. And of course Dan Duquette the general manager of the O's. And they put together a great run last year to the postseason. And defeating the Texas Rangers in the one game playoff and then losing in the ALDS and very strong again coming into this season Don really maybe only one position player available uh, to this roster this year so uh, they are pretty solid Yeah, a lot different from the previous years for the O's when all kinds of jobs were available they're a pretty stock team now and brought back many of the players who were here last year so Felix Dubron ready to work to Alexei Casilla. Jared Saltalamaki catching Felix tonight and swinging to the first pitch is Casilla down the line and left to the left field corner. Gomes over to play it heading to second base is Casilla and he will jog into second base with a double to get it started tonight for the O's. You know most of the time leadoff men get a fastball on that first pitch and that's exactly what Casilla was looking for. The fastball he gets one up about letter high and pulls it right down that line to the 310 for the leadoff double. Dubron only making his second start of the spring. His first was against Tampa Bay and went an inning and two thirds in that game. Of course, as we mentioned in the open, came in the spring training a little bit out of shape and was a little slow to get out of the gate for the Red Sox. Also had a simulated game appearance in which he threw 39 pitches in a simulated game on 23rd of February. There's a liner out of the reach of Napoli at first base into right. Alexei Casilla being waved around. No throw. And the Orioles will take a 1 0 lead. That was quick. Yeah, it's two pitches and a 1 0 ball game. And uh, right there, Lou Ford's trying to move the ball to the opposite field to advance the man to third base. And he gets the bonus. He gets it by Napoli at first base, who has to go into the dive. He can't knock it down. And the Orioles go up 1 0. So nobody out of run in. Lou Ford at first base and Nolan Reimold coming up. Reimold the DH for the Orioles. 16 games last year. He hit at 313 for the O's. DeBron misses away for ball one. Well, Jerry, I think it was a surprise uh, for most last year. The battle that was going on for the fifth spot of the Red Sox rotation, but Felix Dubrant really won it last year with his very good appearances during the spring. Yeah, and then he got better and better, it seemed like, as the year went on until the fatigue set in the second half of the season. One thing he did do last year is pick up his pace a little bit. He was very slow between pitches, and uh, they are trying to get him to work a little bit quicker. Seems like John Farrell's trying to do that with a lot of the Red Sox starters. With all of the starters, yes. So that was Clay Buckholtz over the weekend in the Minnesota complex. On the ground to third, Middlebrooks to second for one. On to first, but it is going to pull Napoli off the bag. They retire Lou Ford at second base, but Reimold will be at first here for the Orioles. At well, that time, Holt at second base was going back off the bag, back toward right field. And I think that might have caused an errant throw to first base. His balance was 
not real good at second base on that double play. Of course, he had that runner right on top of him, Lou Ford, and that'll make you do some things that you don't want to do around the back. One out, one on for Connor Jackson. Red Sox infield still a double play depth with one out in the inning. Jackson on the ground picked to third by Middlebrooks to second for one on the first and Napoli drops the baseball. And safe at first base. He's going to be Connor Jackson so the Red Sox have had two chances to turn double plays and not been able to do it on two occasions. Napoli having the stretch out toward right field side of first base looked like the ball just dropped out of his glove. There's the stretch he gets it right on the heel of the glove and just drops to the ground. So he's been busy here in the first inning had to dive for a ball a couple of stretches at first base. And not able to handle at the relay throw from Holt. So two down Connor Jackson at first base and brings up Steve Pierce. Pierce forgot his jersey in Sarasota. So he changes numbers to number 99. In there for strike one. This last year in 28 games hit a 254. Don't really look back to last year Buck Showalter and the Orioles as the biggest surprise coming out of the American League but Oakland right there with him also getting into the postseason but. Boy, the O's went from really a bad situation to a lot of their regulars starting to really pick it up and finally some of the younger guys that they're expecting to. Have big seasons did at the same time. Adam Jones out in center field, Matt Weeters in behind the plate, and it all just came together. And the pitching was certainly much better for the O's last year. Kept waiting for them to kind of tail off after a terrific first half, and they just got better and better. And certainly the end of the game was the best part for the O's. Pedro Strope in the eighth, and Johnson in the ninth. One two pitch to Steve Pierce. That's in the dirt corralled by Salta Lamacchia taken off was Jackson. He will be safe. Throw gets away. And is backed up by Iglesias. Now that's a good read at first base by Jackson. Once he saw that ball was going to bounce in the dirt and it's the breaking ball from Dubron. He is off at first base. And, and that's a tough with a pickup. You can see right there, as soon as he sees that ball bounce, he goes. There's a lot of guys in his way. He's not quite sure where the baseball is, but knows that Salta Lamacchia did not have it. So two down, Connor Jackson at second base now, and Pierce with a count of two and two. A swing and a miss. Dubron picks up his first strikeout. The Orioles pick up the game's first run. They lead it one to nothing. Red Sox coming up.
Back in Fort Myers, the Orioles have a one nothing lead, but Jimmy Fun kids don't care. They're happy and they're having a great time tonight here at JetBlue Park at Fenway South. Let's check out the Red Sox starting lineup. Proudly brought to you by New England Chevy dealers. For leading it off, Brock holds at second base. Johnny go at left field bat second. Jackie Bradley Jr. is in center field batting third. Mike Napoli at first base in the cleanup spot. Jared Saltalamacchia doing the catching. Will Middlebrooks at third base bat six with Ryan Carp the DH. Mitch Meyer in right field bats eighth. And Jose Iglesias their shortstop bats ninth. On the mound tonight for the Orioles is Dylan Bundy. He was called up from Double A Bowie last year in September. Made his major league debut September 23rd against the Red Sox. In the minor leagues, 23 appearances, 9 and 3 with a 2.08 earned run average. They're expecting big things from Dylan Bundy, and they anticipate that he may begin the year at Double A, but expect him on the Orioles staff once again and in the majors before year's end. Brock Holt standing in, and he takes a look at ball one inside. Well, Bundy last year played at every level of the minor league system for the Baltimore Orioles. It is debut for the O's, 19 years old. In there for a strike to Holt. And Manny Machado becoming the first pair of O's to debut in the same season by the age of 20 since 1964. 1-1 one, one is chopped to second base. Navarro backing up will fire to first for the out on Holt. Let's take a look at the Oriole defense tonight. Russ Kanzler will be at third base. Alexi Casilla, the shortstop. Yamaiko Navarro at second. And Danny Valencia, the first baseman, left to right. Steve Pierce, Lou Ford, and Connor Jackson. And Luis Exposito doing the catching for Bundy. One down here in the first inning for Johnny Gomes. Getting another start in left field. Gomes had scraped up his knee pretty good and when last we saw the O's in Sarasota. Banged into the wall. And required some stitches in the knee. Missed a few days but back in there yesterday. And back to back starts now for Johnny Gomes. Gomes at 262 a year ago with the Oakland A's. The other Surprise really in the American League last year. The A's getting to the postseason last year. Beaten by the Detroit Tigers in the American League Division Series. Outfield deep in straight away on Gomes. This one high in the air to right field. Connor Jackson out there and right. We'll put it away for out number two. And send it down to Jenny Dell. Well, Don, Yankees closer Mariano Rivera announced his intentions to retire at the 20 to 13 season at a press conference this morning. And I spoke with multiple Red Sox players and manager John Farrell, and they all talked about the respect that they have for Rivera, both on and off the field. So we want to talk to the fans at home. So using the hashtag Nesson ST13, answer this question, please. As a Red Sox fan, which opposing player have you or did you always have respect for? Please hashtag Nesson respect. Well, Jerry, I know you have a great deal of respect for Mariano Rivera. He's had an incredible career. Well, you have to, Don. You know, the, the, the career that he's had, but also the way that he's conducted himself as a professional baseball player. You never heard anything bad about Mariano Rivera, a guy that was always willing to uh, help his teammates, help other guys in baseball, learn that cut fastball. Uh, very quiet, very professional. And, I mean, the numbers are just absolutely off the charts, especially in the postseason. It's amazing to me that he basically used one pitch to get it done, too. It's incredible. A cut fastball. 2 0 pitch misses inside here to Jackie Bradley Jr. Moves ahead 3 0. In the three spot in the Red Sox order tonight, batting with two outs and the base is empty. And there's a strike 3 and 1. That'll miss for ball four. First base runner of the night for the Red Sox comes with two outs here in the first inning. And that'll bring up Mike Napoli. Napoli has a couple home runs already in the spring. One here and one over at Hammond Stadium against the Minnesota Twins. Last year, 
24 home runs in what worked out to be his last year with Texas. 108 games last year for the Rangers. Ground ball to third of the backhand. Chandler goes to second base for the out there that ends the inning. We are through one. The Baltimore Orioles have a one nothing advantage. Instead of the second. What a free week of youth sports camp at World Premier Training Establishment, IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida. Go to Nesson.com slash IMG for your chance to win. And we play along to the second inning back at JetBlue Park at Fenway South. Orioles have a one nothing advantage. Hey, that foul pole down the right field line is getting like Fenway. <laughs> People signing it. Good view right down the line here at JetBlue Park. Felix Dubron into his second inning. Gave up a double and a single to the first two batters he faced on two pitches. And the Orioles put together a one nothing advantage. He settled down to get out of the inning without any further damage. And the Orioles enjoy a one nothing lead. Here's Russ Kanzler. <laughs> Orioles off to a fast start during the spring. They're nine and two. Those were last year triple A. Sends one foul down the right field line out of play. Jerry, the Orioles will be looking to prove this year that uh, last year was not a fluke. And I think uh, they certainly will do that. I think they'll be right in competition with everybody else in that American League uh, East. And uh, that bullpen hasn't changed, that's for sure. And that was a real strong suit. So many extra inning games last year for the Baltimore Orioles. One run games that they would win. Swing and a miss. Dubron struck out Pierce to end the first. He strikes out Kanzler to open up the second inning. Looked like a change up that time from Dubron working down and away. 85 miles an hour on the off speed pitch. Salt Lamacchia is setting up away, gets the pitch away. And down in the zone. One down here in the second inning. Danny Valencia stands in on the right side. Brief stop with the Red Sox as he takes strike one. Former Minnesota twin. Valencia in 82 games last year at AAA, hitting at 259. Orioles adding Valencia during the offseason and Yamiko Navarro. Navarro, of course, also formerly of the Red Sox. There's Navarro waiting on deck, batting out of the eight spot tonight for the Orioles. You know, we talked, John, about Dubron coming in uh, to camp a little bit out of shape and uh, got a talking to from Pedro Martinez. About that and Pedro trying to offer some wisdom to uh, Dubront about how to prepare all season long or all year long for the season. 
And it's not uncommon in young players, you know. Young, you remember when you were young and how good you felt? Uh, yeah. All went along, you know. <laughs> you, you were always in shape, you know what I mean? You thought you were anyway. You thought you were. And you roll into camp and not so much. But it's a little surprising, though, I, I would think. I mean, a guy coming off the year that he just did, yeah. just kind of being an important year for him coming in. He learned his lesson. Swing and a miss. Elevates to get Valencia. Three straight strikeouts for Dubron. And Dubon settling in now, going upstairs by design that time with the fastball to pick up the strikeout. Valencia chasing a ball well out of the strike zone above the letters, about shoulder high. Two down here in the second inning for Yamiko Navarro. Last year, Triple A in 66 games at 279. Drawing a blank, Jerry. He was traded from Mike Avilas, yes? That sound right to you? You put me on the spot? Yeah, because I don't remember. I don't remember either. I remember him being traded on the road and he was surprised and he didn't have yeah, any of his stuff. That's, that's right. But it was no. for Kansas City Royal and I think it was Mike Avilas. No, it couldn't have been Avilas. Avilas was here at the beginning of the season. Meyer will make the catch. We're going to get to the bottom of this in between innings. I don't know. Jerry doesn't know. Do you know? Orioles have a one nothing lead. Sox fans, subscribe to MLB.TV Premium today and watch over 150 select live spring training games. Plus, every regular season game is live or on demand on over 250 mobile and connected devices. Visit RedSox.com for details. We welcome you back to JetBlue Park at Fenway South. A nice night here tonight as the Red Sox playing back-to-back -back night games. And tonight, the Orioles are in town. And the weather has finally warmed up. Much better today. Yeah, nice and comfortable the last two days. 70s. Not to jump on you and say that I was right, but I was right. Mike Avilas was traded away for no, I, I, I believe it. For yeah. some reason, I thought Navarro was here last year, but that's not correct. But he was stunned the day that he was traded. He, he was. Really I, I do remember that day, yes. Well, nice Avilas. kid. Really yes. nice kid. Mike Avilas this year will be playing in Cleveland. Swing and a miss. Of course, he was traded for John Farrell. Was briefly a Toronto Blue Jay for like two weeks. Speaking of Cleveland, did you yeah. see Tito on the? Uh, <laughs> I've scooter? heard about it. I've not seen it. Oh my goodness! Does he look ridiculous? He looks, yeah, <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. I mean, more than normal. He's going to the ballpark on a little scooter, <laughs> and, he, and he's going to use it in Cleveland because he says he's going to live about a block and a half from the ballpark. And take a scooter. And it's actually closer to the ballpark than part where he'd have to park his car. He probably doesn't want to pay for the parking, is the truth. I wish we had that on tape somewhere because it's it's hilarious. Assault well, Lamaki striking out for the first out. So it's him on a scooter. On a scooter. Yeah. Tito. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I 
I could see it. I haven't seen it yet. I did see that it was out there. I did not see the picture. I saw it this afternoon. I think I think Jenny has it, as a matter of fact. Will Middlebrooks. Bats here with one out in the bottom of the second inning. Brooks now, Ryan Carp waiting on deck. There's a Red Sox bat here in the bottom of the second inning. It'll bounce in for ball two. And Dylan Bundy on the mound tonight for the Orioles. Won the Jim Palmer Award last year for the Orioles Minor League Pitcher of the Year. They have high hopes for him. As you mentioned, pitched at all classifications last year, and that includes the big leagues. The minor league hitters last year to a 186 average. Swing and a miss, elevated a little bit there on the fastball. And yeah, Middlebrooks had his uh, count in his favor, three ball, one strike, and he's looking for that fastball. Problem was, it was a little bit too high. Will had the scare last time we saw the Orioles at Sarasota. Uh, the check swing. He had re aggravated for the moment that wrist. But more of a scare than anything else. As he was fine after the game, took BP the next day and has been fine ever since. There's ball four and a one out walk for Will Middlebrooks. Well, Sox fans, use the power of social media to know where your team will be all season long. Use your mobile device now and scan the code that's on your TV screen to download the complete 2013 Red Sox schedule. Nesson and Nesson.com have made it never so easy to keep your Sox on all summer. Now, it's not easy for me. I, you you got to do something with your phone. You got to right. put your phone on it. <laughs> I don't think it works with your flip phone. No. My <laughs> <laughs> and, and then you got to put the phone on. Right. And, and then you put it on this thing here, and you should try it. With my flip phone? Try it with your flip phone. It might work. What's it gonna do? I don't know. We'll see if it works. Let me try. Put 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 your phone right up to that code, and right, I got a, I got a flip phone. See, flip phone. <laughs> All right. Let's see. From 1975. I got to put it on. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, put it right up against the stand, right up against. Yeah, it's it, got to come on. Oh, it's not it. even on yet. So you never on. leave it on, which no. is part of the problem. No, no. one can ever reach you. I might have a mess. <laughs> All right, no, there it is. All right, put it right up against what, the what side do I put on? Is anything happening? Wait, what side do I put on? Uh, that side, because you can shoot a picture of it. Can you take, you take picture. pictures on that? I yeah, I don't know. Oh, there, I got a camera right here. Right. So take a picture of that, and then. But I want you to snap. <laughs> All right. There you go. Nothing come out. AT&T net. No, you got nothing. nothing. <laughs> so you're not going to know the schedule. In there for a strike to Ryan Carp. But you like your flip phone. I don't see you deviating from your flip phone. There's no need to. <laughs> no. <laughs> but anyway, that's how that works. Right. you got to have a phone. And one that yeah. apparently is conducive and, to that. <laughs> <laughs> it's called an app, but yes, it has to be conducive to that. You need a scan app, scan they tell me. App. Scan and app. And it'll be conducive to that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm out. <laughs> one out, one on. As Ryan Carp takes a swing and a miss, and a full count now. Carp the DH tonight has seen time at first base and in the outfield. Runner takes off, fly ball hits to left field. Steve Pierce goes all the way back to the warning track to make the catch. Right in front of the wall, and Middlebrooks has got to go back to the bag at first. Ryan Carp gives it a ride, but he's out number two of the inning. A nice job out there by Pierce in left field. Looked like the ball had enough distance, enough legs to get off that left field wall, but uh, Pierce had it played correctly right from the beginning. That ball slicing away from him, coming off the bat of the left hander. 
It goes right up to the uh, door that goes into the Red Sox clubhouse and makes the catch. Two down runner at first for Mitch Meyer. Former Kansas City Royal takes strike one. Meyer 172 games, 172 batting average, I should say, in 32 games last year. Spending the bulk of the year at AAA for the Royals. No one pitch up and away. Mitch Meyer broke into the big leagues in 2006 with Kansas City. Line into right field. Base hit headed towards the corner. Middlebrooks touches second edge for third base. Little bobble out there in right field. Middlebrooks going to try and score now. A bobble again. No throw. And the Red Sox tie the score one to one. Mitch Meyer ends up at third base. Yeah, I doubt whether Middlebrooks would have been able to score, but uh, Connor Jackson in right field, I think, dropped this ball twice. It looked like an off speed pitch by Bundy, and Jackson has to go all the way into the corner to make this play. He comes out of his glove once, picks it up, and then dropped it again. And by that time, they're able to bring in that run all the way from first base. Here's Maya. He sees the bobble, checks the runner, and he heads on to third base. So a double and an error charge to Connor Jackson in right field. Where takes third base on the air and Jose Iglesias trying to put the Red Sox on top. Takes a pitch inside and straightens him up. And Jerry, he looks different. You look at uh, Iglesias' size, and I know you mentioned he worked a lot during the offseason to add some weight. He looks much stronger. Yeah, he does. He, he built up, uh, bulked up a little bit. Chop this to short. Casillas got it. Throw is low, but dug out at first base by Valencia. Well, the Red Sox grab a run in the inning, and at the end of two, all tied at one. Red Sox Spring Training Baseball in Nesson is brought to you by the new Cape Flyer. Summer weekend train service from Boston to Iannis. Getting to the Cape has never been so easy. For information, go to capeflyer.com or call 508-775-8504. 1 1 score as we enter the top half of the third inning. Red Sox able to grab a run on the bottom of the second inning. To tie things up and Felix Dubron back to the hill for his third inning of work tonight. We'll be dealing with Luis Exposito, Alexei Casilla, and Lou Ford here in the third inning. This is like the regular season, Jerry. We got three and three last night, tonight, and tomorrow afternoon. We got what? Three games in three days. Oh. Yeah, it's like yeah. we're we're ready for it. We're, yeah, we've built our innings up and uh, yeah. our words, and it's so about that rotation now, where you can do three in a row. I don't know about four in a row, but three in a row. Three in a row is a nice pace. 
I notice you've already changed your watch for tomorrow. Yes, it is right now uh, 19 of the uh, nine on my watch. I think I messed mine up. I have mine at 20 of 10, which is probably not right. No, you went up two hours. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> no, you don't want to lose two hours. You don't want to gain two hours tonight. You want no. just one hour. How did I do that? Right now it's 19 of nine. Okay. So it's 19 of nine. Uh, well, they actually right now 18 of nine. Okay. So now you're all set for all tomorrow set. morning. Tomorrow morning. 8.41 on my watch right now. 8.42 now. Right. So we're good. So mentally right now in my head, I'm already there. You're already That's there. A trick you taught me many years ago. I'll pick you up at uh, 9 o'clock tomorrow right. at a meeting spot. Mm -hmm. And we'll drive up to Port Charlotte to bring you another Red Sox game. Luis Exposito, the former Red Sox catcher, leading it off here for the Orioles. Full count as Felix Dubron about to throw his 30th pitch of his outing. And it's fouled off. Esposito will take the walk. DeBron thought he had strike three, but down to first goes Esposito with first walk allowed by DeBron of the night. And a lot of great views here at JetBlue Park at Fenway South. Monster seats here and standing room area up above. Lead runner on for the Orioles in the third. Here's Alexei Casilla. Former Minnesota Twin takes strike one. Casillo with a double in the first inning. Jumped on the first pitch of the game. Came around to score the Orioles' first run. In there for strike two. Seemed last year, Jerry, early. In games, Felix Dubron's pitch count was very high. Yes, it was a problem he ran into a lot last year. He gave him a lot of those five inning, six inning ball games. Look, you see it badly fooled on that. Strikes out, pitch down and in. And there's the fourth strikeout for Felix Dubron, first out of the third inning. I tell you, for only his second outing uh, in, in 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 big league games this spring, pretty good curveball shown tonight by Dubron. Good breaking ball right there for a, a strikeout. Plus the man at first base, you don't have to make the throw to first base. Salt Lamaki was thinking about it, but then realized he didn't have to do that because there's someone already occupying the bag. One out, one on for Lou Ford. Ford takes strike one. He's single, driving a run in the first inning. Ron broke into the big leagues in 2010 with the Red Sox, parts of 2011, and of course, all of last year. Last year's first full year in the majors, first full year as a starter. 29 starts last year for the Red Sox, 11 wins and 29 starts for the left hander. Now, towards right center field, Meyer on the run won't get there. On a hop, it gets by and backed up by Bradley Jr. To second base goes Ford. The throw wildly sent back into the infield and Ford to second as Exposito takes third. And Lou Ford is two for two on the night. Now Lou Ford going to the opposite field. Nice effort out here by Mitch Meyer, but he can't come up with it. Bradley Jr. backing him up and gets that ball back in somewhere toward the infield. Had really no chance of getting the man at second base. And a second and third one out situation now for the Orioles. Here's Nolan Rymel, right handed hitting DH for Baltimore.
And in there for a strike, one and one. LeBron with four strikeouts in two and a third innings. He's walked a batter, including the leadoff hitter in this inning, and Luis Exposito. Chopped down the third baseline foul. So Felix jumping ahead here, one and two. Red Sox at this stage of the game playing back uh, all around the infield with two men in scoring position and only the one out in the inning. That is quickly shot to the right side of the infield into right. Exposito will score. Ford will stop at third. It's an RBI single for Nolan Reimold, and the Orioles take a 2 1 lead. Well, the Orioles have not been bashful so far in this game tonight. They've been up there swinging the bat. A nice, easy inning in the second for Dubrant, but uh, trouble here in the third. And it all started with a walk to Exposito, the catcher. Opposite field base hit right there, charged by Maya. The throw comes in, but uh, cut off by Napoli. Now the Red Sox looking for a double play to get out of this inning. So first and third, one out. And Connor Jackson, the battery, reached on a fielder's choice in the first inning. And DeBron wanted that. It's ball one. This is rip foul outside of third. Jumping out of the way was Lou Ford standing in foul ground down the third base line. Connor Jackson spending time with the Red Sox has moved around quite a bit over the last few years. Two, two and one. That's a strike. Two and two. See Dubron trying to keep that ball down, trying to induce a ground ball to get a double play. Connor Jackson thought that ball was a, a little bit too low. Swing and a miss, and Jackson strikes out. Five Ks now for DeBron. Needed that. Two down. Now that's that curveball down we we're talking about, and a very good one from DeBron. Started out about shoulder high and ended up about ankle high. To pick up that strikeout. So no ground ball, but no contact either. And now two outs in the inning. Four to third. Rymold at first with two way, and Steve Pierce the batter. Pierce a strikeout victim in the first inning. He went swinging in the first. And strike one. Brought back to throwing strikes. He's had five K's in just two and two thirds innings. This scoop by Salta Lamaki on a pitch down and in. Action for the Red Sox in the pen. J.D. Durbin is warming in the pen as LeBron has run into some trouble here in the third inning and close to reaching his pitch count on the night. 
Swing and a miss for Pierce, one and two. That chief with Dubron tonight, his off speed pitches have been better than his fastball. His curveball, that time a changeup to get a swing and miss. And a changeup tailing down and away from uh, Pierce. 50th pitch of his outing coming up. Yeah, Pierce, very late swing, very defensive swing to get a piece of that. And a changeup swing on that fastball, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> Just barely staying alive. This ball about by him when he made contact, almost in the glove of Saul Lamakia. The breakdown for Felix Dubron tonight. Four to third, Reimold at first, two down, a run already in. And a one two pitch to Steve Pierce. Left side picked by Middlebrooks, who go to second for the force out there that ends the inning. A run for the Orioles, who take a 2 1 lead. Jenny Dell will have a special guest when we come back. DCU Visa Card. Welcome back to JetBlue Park. We're here with 38 amazing children from the Jimmy Fund. All led by you here. How amazing is it that they can be out of the hospital and have an opportunity to be in sunny Florida? This weekend is the most unbelievable time we can have with these patients. To know that the months of planning it takes to get these kids with their medicines away from their moms and dads and doctors and bring them here and when it all works so perfectly, it's, it's nothing better than this. You spoke about their medicines. Now, I know there's 20 medical staff members. How does that exactly work? Because a lot of these kids are on some serious medication. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes, and I have my adolescent specialist, J Jennifer Noonan. She's in charge of really getting the nursing set with the teenagers, so as soon as a teen signs up for this trip, we make sure that we know everything they're on, every, di every part of the diagnosis, every part of the treatment, so we know exactly what's going to happen during this weekend. So we make sure the nurses that come on this trip understand what needs to be done with these kids. 60th year of the partnership between the Red Sox and the Jimmy Fund. I know I saw a bunch of the kids out there meeting the players before. How important is that relationship? This is such, it's an important, it's an important thing around around the country. This doesn't happen anywhere else and I think sometimes we forget that and we take it for granted and I think every time we go to different parks and they sort of see this amazing relationship with the Red Sox and these Jimmy Fund patients, people are in awe and we are every time when the Red Sox players come out and they show just their love for these kids. We love it. As staff, there's not, there's just, it's a really amazing thing for us. Thank you for all that you do, Lisa. Well, Lisa Sherber is an amazing woman and someone that has worked uh, for so long with the Jimmy Fund and uh, we have worked so long with her and uh, we're very thankful for all that she does. There's a ground ball right side second base and Navarro will throw out hold for the first out of the inning. 
Terry, you know about uh, the relationship between the Red Sox and the Jimmy Fund over the years, and it seems that it has been a very special one. But this trip for these kids is the most special part of their year, and it has been a great deal of fun for them to come down. Yeah, we see it during the season, too, where they make a trip, uh, you know, to other ballparks around the American League. And, uh, you know, just to get uh, away from the, the hospital for a while, get out in the sunshine, get out in the good weather, watch some little baseball, and uh, it continues to grow and grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger. A little trouble getting out of Boston yesterday as they had a long delay. Got here at 5 a.m. this morning, and it was very similar to their trip uh, to Pittsburgh uh, a couple of years ago when they joined us on the road. They, they got in at 3 a.m. there, and also, but uh, all smiles and glad to be here. And a lot of the players spending time with them today as well, and we'll continue to do so this entire weekend here from JetBlue Park at Fenway South. Johnny Gomes tried to hold up, but once you get that big swing going, it's tough to hold up. Orioles have moved on to their second pitcher. Kevin Gosman is into the game last year in A ball. Five appearances 0 and 1 with a 3.60 earned run average. So A ball is in Frederick of the Carolina League. No two pitch a miss downstairs. Ball one. He's a hard thrower too. His fastball uh, has been clocked 95, 96 miles an hour. First pitch he threw in this inning was 95. Takes over for Dylan Bundy with the first two innings, giving up one hit, one run. It was unearned. He walked two and struck out a batter. Gomes will strike out. He thought about it but couldn't pull the trigger, and it was by him. First strikeout for Gosman, two down. Well, Sox fans, chill out at spring training with Nesson and a Dunkin' Donuts iced coffee in hand by entering the chilled out at spring training sweepstakes. For your chance to win a trip to Fort Myers, follow Nesson and use hashtag Dunkin' Ice Sweeps to tell us how you'd most enjoy a Dunkin' Donuts iced coffee. For more details or to enter online, visit Nesson.com slash Dunkin' Donuts. Big cut by Jackie Bradley Jr. Walked in the first inning. He gets a start in center field tonight. We saw Jacoby Ellsbury last night. A couple of good arms we're seeing from the Orioles here early. The young pitches, hard throwers. Ooh, that's pretty nasty right there. That's uh, that's the changeup. So from 95 down to 83 with the changeup. And Bradley Jr. way out in front of that pitch. Fights this one off foul. Now the question every day is can this guy start the year in the big leagues for the Red Sox and for the most part John Farrell has stayed pretty consistent saying that he will begin the year in triple A and in the minor leagues. But anytime there's been any question about any injuries it's been well does that mean now that Jackie Bradley Jr. can find his way on the team. Out towards left center, and he's got himself a one out single here for the Red Sox. He's been aboard twice tonight. A nice inside out swing there by uh, Bradley as he takes that ball up over the head of the shortstop, Casilla. Again, that might be the changeup right there. It was in the 80s. And that time, uh, Bradley not fooled by it, able to inside out the ball to the opposite field. Two down, Bradley Jr. at first base. Here's Mike Napoli. And a snap throw to first, but back in time is Bradley Jr. Well, Jerry, today the news before the game that uh, David Ortiz undergoing an MRI, not on one heel, but both heels. Yeah, both heels, I guess, have been bothering him. So they uh, took some, an MRI again on uh, both of his heels, as you mentioned, Don, and they're going to compare those to some of in the past. And uh, John Fowler kind of felt like it was soreness, you know, coming from the Achilles area that he's been laboring a little bit uh, with. And uh, they're going to check and, and measure him against some of the older MRIs that he has taken. So we'll see what that development comes out of that. The one pitch is sky to center field. Lou Ford is out there. And the Orioles center fielder waits for it to come down. Finally makes the catch. It ends the inning. Red Sox leave a base runner on. We are through three. It's 2 1. Baltimore on top.
Red Sox Spring Training Baseball in Nesson is brought to you in part by Bob's Discount Furniture. You score extreme quality, choice, and value at Bob's Discount Furniture in store and online at mybobs.com. Well, it's on to the fourth inning with the Orioles on top, two to one. Red Sox bring on their second pitcher of the night, and the closer Joel Hanrahan into the game for Boston. Got a rough outing in his last outing against the Twins. Last season with Pittsburgh, 63 games, five and two with the 2.72 earned run average. He was 36 out of 40 in save opportunities. Hanrahan was charged with four runs on four hits and a walk in a third of an inning against the Minnesota Twins in his last outing. Taking the loss the outing before that giving up three runs one earned against New York. So a couple of back to back tough outings and talking to him the other day after he came out of the game in Minnesota. He said that it's been tough to kind of replicate the intensity that you have as a closer. During spring training, coming in pitching in the second or third innings in some instances. This is hit well to center. Bradley Jr. is out there and he'll make the catch. That's quite a lid, isn't it, Don? It is. Yeah. But I imagine, Jerry, it would be tough as a closer to really kind of replicate. That ramped upness that you get coming into a spring training game. I think so. Yeah, closes are funny. You know, it's, uh, if they come in in the eighth inning, sometimes it's not as effective. If they come in when they have more than a a three run lead, uh, they don't seem to be as effective at times. It's very strange the mindset, but it, it's a different mindset because you know when you come in, the game's on the line. It's your game. There's nobody warming up behind you. You've got to get it done. And he's got the first out of this inning and. Danny Valencia chases after that pitch quickly down 0 and 2. That's that nasty slider that Hanrahan has. He's thrown a couple of them here to uh, Valencia to start him off. And he takes care of Valencia very quickly. Strikes him out second out of the fourth inning. Yeah, Valencia did not look very good on the slider before, so try another one. And the result, the strikeout. Two down of in the inning for Yamaika Navarro. Flight out to right field in the second inning. And going back to that hat for a second, if you blew that thing up, there's a good chance that she might blow away. <laughs> like a helium balloon. <laughs> that's a good point. So it's kind of a dangerous hat. Yeah. I mean, it's got the uh, green lid on it, but if you blew that thing up and made a complete <laughs> baseball out of it, there's a good chance she would take right out of the stadium. I'm sure, the gentleman behind her is pleased that she brought that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Imagine talking to his wife. How about this one in front of me? Yeah. I can't see around the hat. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. It's yeah. a great hat. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> This will bounce in and it evens at two and two. Navarro playing in Pittsburgh last year for the Pirates. Trying to find his way onto the Orioles this year. Flight out to the right fielder Mitch Meyer in the second inning. And a very impressive inning for Joel Hanrahan after a couple of tough outings. As a one, two, three, fourth with three, three and a half, the Orioles have a two one lead. A couple of K's from Hanrahan.
Two to one Orioles on top as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Well, we asked tonight for your tweets uh, today earlier. Mariano Rivera announcing that he will retire at the end of the year and at Javatar. Fenway should stand as one. First time Mariano comes out this season, then Bullway. But he's certainly a class act, and it's certainly true. And I think Jerry, one of my favorite memories was him being uh, applauded on opening day of yeah. 2005 <laughs> at Fenway, and then him tipping his cap with more. Here's Jenny Dell. Don, I spoke with Andrew Bailey before the game, and he said it's hard to put into words that what he's done for the game. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer, and Andrew Bailey personally appreciates all he's done for relievers. Well, a single to center field for Jared Salta Lamacchia right up over the shoulder of the pitcher. Is action of the Red Sox band. There is Andrew Bailey. So we've already seen Joel Hanrahan now Bailey warming up as we play here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Salta Lamacchio, the leadoff single, gathers the Red Sox third hit of the game, and here's Will Middlebrooks. Middlebrooks walked and scored in the second inning. Well, the wrist fracture last year seemed to kind of uh, ruin what was going to be a terrific year for Will Middlebrooks. He lived up to everything that was expected of him. You hear about prospects all the time, but not all of them pan out. He was panning out in a big way last year prior to the injury. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun watching him in a full, healthy season coming up. I would agree, Don. He really burst onto the scene last year and played very good baseball, you know, offensively in particular. Some work to do at third base, but to continue to work very hard on and improve his game at third base. There's strike three. Third strikeout for Orioles pitching tonight out number one of the fourth inning. Middlebrooks didn't like that call. He thought the ball was uh, down and away and still having words with uh, Timmons the home plate umpire. Thought that ball might have been too low. One out one on and yeah, that brings up Ryan Carp. Slowly chopped down the first baseline. It'll roll fair. It's picked up. Exposito fires to first base. The catcher. And they get the out on Carp. He made the split decision. He was going to pick it up. That had a chance to roll foul, but he picks it up and throws out Carp as Salta Lamacchia takes second base. And then he did a very nice job after picking the ball up, deciding that it was going to probably stay fair and he could get an out. He cleared himself of that run and made sure he didn't hit him in the back and got that throw to first base to record the out. So two down, Salta Lamaki at second base, and Mitch Meyer, the batter. Meyer doubled in the second inning. Are you staying for nine innings tonight? I'm going to be here for all nine. I plan on it tonight anyway. Really? Yeah, I'm going to do them all. I know that has not been the norm the last couple of games, but you yeah. said you were stretched out and ready in spring training. I'm not stretched out, Brad. No, you're not even close. I haven't had enough reps. This is slowly lined to short and caught by Casilla as he tumbles forward to make the grab. That'll end the inning. The Red Sox leave Salt and Lamaki at second base. We're through four, two, one, Baltimore. When I
two on Baltimore as we get ready for the fifth. Tonight's inside word on Nesson comes to you courtesy of Bob's Discount Furniture. Let's go down to the Sox dugout where Jenny is standing by with Joel Hanrahan. Joel, so much success last season. A tough start in the spring training. Great outing today. Coming into the game in the middle, does that affect your mindset? Uh, not really. I mean, it doesn't affect your mindset. It, it's a little bit to do with your preparation. Um, our preparation, if we know we're pitching the eighth or ninth inning, is a little bit different. So, I, like today, I try to start my preparation a little bit earlier. Um, Juan told me I was coming in after uh, Felix, so you know, that kind of helped out in, with getting my stretches and getting everything ready. But, uh, you know, knew it was there. <laughs> Seemed like it were. You're leaving on Monday for the birth of your first son to Texas. Are you excited? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, I've, I've been waiting for this day for a long time. Uh, you know, it's it's you know a pretty pretty neat experience. Uh, you know, people ask me if I'm ready. I just say, well, I have to be. So uh, definitely ready to get home uh, and uh, you know see my wife. I haven't seen her for you know six weeks either. So it'll be nice to to get that and uh, meet him. So I had to clean up the face a little bit. So so his first impression wouldn't wouldn't be too bad. Mariano Rivera announced that he's retiring after the 2013 season. What what does he mean meant to you personally? Uh, I mean, he, he's he's somebody that we all all look up to. Any bullpen guy, any reliever, uh, you know, obviously wants to be like him. Can we be like him? No, there's there's not a chance. I don't think anybody will ever be like him. But uh, you know, he's had a, a great career, and um, you know, it's amazing to watch watch him work. And uh, you know, I've heard he's even a better person. So you know, he's he's had great success, and uh, you know, wish nothing but nothing but the best for him in, after baseball. Nothing but for the best for you and your wife. Thank you very much, Joel. Thank you. Well, successful outing tonight for Joel Hanrahan as Andrew Bailey now in the game for the Red Sox jumps ahead of Luis Exposito one and two. Well, nice for Hanrahan to have a clean inning. But you did tonight to fly out two strikeouts. Here's a liner into center field for Exposito. And the Orioles get the lead runner on for the third time in five innings. And Exposito has been on twice in this ball game. A walk in his first at bat back in the third inning when the Orioles scored a run now a base hit to start off the fifth inning. Well, Andrew Bailey in here for the Red Sox last year 19 appearances after being shelved in spring training and missing a lot of the first half of the year. 19 appearances overall one and one with a 7.04 earned run average six out of nine in save opportunities when he did take over as the closer from Alfredo Aceves at the time. This one chop foul. Bailey resides in Madison, Connecticut during the offseason. Born in New Jersey and he's 28 years old. Second year now with the Red Sox after spending his first three big league seasons with the Oakland A's. Strike two to Alexei Casilla. At least 20 saves in each of his first three big league seasons. This is to right field, sending Meyer backpedaling. Makes the catch for the first out of the inning. Well, the Red Sox would like to turn two here, and Sox fans create your own double play ticket package by completing, compiling two great Red Sox games. Choose one game in April or May. And pair that with either opening day or a summer weekend game for double the fun. Tickets are available in a variety of seating locations throughout Fenway Park. So choose your games now at RedSox.com slash tickets. That was quite a transition made well, from the double play to the read. I mean, this isn't your first rodeo. No. <laughs> <laughs> One out here in the fifth with Exposito at first base. The kind of things I think about at night while I'm out on the lanai, Don, you know? A man alone in his thoughts? Huh? A man alone in his thoughts? Uh, alone in his thoughts watching the flight pad and come into Fort Myers Airport. I love it. Swing and a miss for Lou Ford. You should start writing some of that stuff down while you're out there on the lanai by yourself. A lot of my thoughts aren't uh, real good. No. No. It's... Shouldn't be put on paper. They're, uh, they'll take you bizarre. away. Yeah. Very bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody reads them? <laughs> it's 
Good thing you have somebody else handle your Twitter. That could be very dangerous if Ooh. you started tweeting stuff. Yeah. From the one eye. This one is chopped foul over by the Red Sox dugout. It's funny, you have a glass of wine and, you know, it's like a normal flight pattern coming in. You have yeah. a second one, there's like more planes coming, you know. <laughs> and you really start thinking, whoa, very dangerous. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. So it's a good thing you're not tweeting at that time of night. It could be very, very dangerous. You know, I, I thought it was cruel of you last night because you didn't have to do the last, what, three innings of the yes, game? Yes, I was off. You, you were you're gone. You were, you took off. What? Yeah. That was, no, I didn't. I was here the whole time. I, I didn't, didn't see you after the game. Oh, why did you Nesson Daly with you after the game? Oh, we taped that. No. Oh. <laughs> that is not true. That's uh, not true. You that I was here for the entire thing. I yeah. sat over here on the floor right there, Jerry. Well, right. Because there were no other seats. But it was fine. Dick Bramer did a great job. And you got a chance to do more innings. You haven't missed any innings. But that's fine. No two. Ford will rip this right over the shoulder of Bailey and into center. Exposito up to second base. Ford reaches it first. That was well struck. He's three for three. Three hits. Not quite a night. A single, a double, and now a single. A line shot up over the head of uh, Andrew Bailey. Second hard hit ball this inning off Bailey. That's one you wave at and hope it doesn't hit your wrist. So two on one away. Nolan Rymold coming up. He's reached on a fielder's choice and had an RBI single to right. Now, if it hadn't been Vanessa Daly, I would have gone because there was, was no only point <laughs> of you being there. <laughs> no, no, really. had three innings off. Yeah, so we didn't know who was on the field. Right. I had no idea who was in the game at that point. I knew I wasn't coming back. Right. But uh, we did have Ness and Daly. <laughs> Pitches a strike over the outside corner. You know what I like what we do now is uh, <laughs> we have 30 seconds <laughs> where we have to like look into the camera and it's stare. And, and I'm not really sure what we do. Oh no, it's just a stare. Let's do it now. You're supposed to nod a little, a I little think. bit, not too much, not talk though. So tonight on Ness and Daily, you'll see us do that. Yeah, we do that. We do that. We've already done it. One one pitch is in there for a strike, and it's one and two. I mean, uh, it's I've never done that before, and that's pretty. It's not easy to do. I have. But you just stare. You, yeah. You don't smile. Do you smile sometimes? <laughs> you, then I stop. I don't want to smile too much. Do you nod your head? I I do every about ten seconds. Swing and a miss. Reinhold strikes out, and there's two down. Speaking of. Ness and Daly get caught up on everything you need to know about your favorite New England sports with Ness and Daly tonight at 10 p.m. Adam Bellerin and Jameson Coy will update you on all favorite players and teams, including a complete recap of the Sox O's game tonight. Andy Brickley will break down today's Bruins Flyers action and Hockey East prepares for the postseason. You'll see Jerry and I nodding all that and more on Ness and Daly tonight at 10. Jackson is 0 for 2 in the game. He's reached on a fielder's choice and struck out. You know, when you think about that, too, 30 seconds is really not that long of a period of time. But when you're sitting there staring at a camera and don't know what to do, it takes, it's a long time. It seems much longer. It seems a lot longer. They like they tell us, okay, that's 15 seconds. <laughs> and it seems like it's been a half hour. Well, getting hit with that was Connor Jackson. He'll head down to first base. This will load the bases. Kind of a shaking inning, shaking inning here for Andrew Bailey. Couple of hits, and now hits a batter right off the elbow, of Connor Jackson. So trying to get out of this uh, mess with two outs. Base is loaded with two down in the inning. Steve Pierce is 0 for 2, a chance here to widen this lead for the Orioles. See, I think you're supposed to smile the more I think about it because I watched Jenny do it tonight. And she was smiling and a if lot. If we have that on tape, I'd like to show that because she smiles a lot. And she nods her head a little bit. And I don't think we oh, do I, that. I know I nod. And I do smile every now and again. I just don't think you can smile the entire time. 
That's my point. I, I think it, it's too much smiling. I mean, we just don't smile that Guys, much. Guys, do we have that on tape down there <laughs> so we can see that it, uh, if we're doing it like Jenny does it? It's on the ground left side. Middlebrooks will cut it off and flip to second base for the out. That ends the inning. It may be us. That's <laughs> two to one Orioles on top. <laughs> Two to one, Baltimore on top of Boston as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Gosman back on the mound here for the Orioles. He is third inning of relief for Baltimore. And the Red Sox have Jose Iglesias lead it off. Gosman has two strikeouts, giving up two hits. A run allowed by the Orioles. Dylan Bundy was charged with that run. He worked two innings to start the game. Here's Jose Iglesias grounded out to shortstop in the second inning. Now we're going to show you this inning uh, once they get it together in a truck how Jenny steers for 30 seconds and how we do it. And you'll see a noticeable difference in uh, professionalism and two clowns try <laughs> trying to make TV. Navarro at second fires to first for the out. All right, uh, this is our staring into the camera prior to the game, getting ready for Nesson Daly. <laughs> Look at Jenny. The smile. Smiling, see? What are we doing? <laughs> oh, my. What? Is... I don't know what to do. I don't know. I don't think they're going to use that on Nesson Daly tonight, do you? <laughs> They'll have the four box. It'll be Jameson oh, is that what it is? It's yes, a it's a four box, and then there's Jenny, and then there's you and I. I was wondering why we do yes. that. Yes. So I don't think that that's usable. I don't. I don't think. I, don't know, I, I think it, people will notice us, though. We want to stand out because <laughs> you kind of all blend in. <laughs> Pitch outside to Brock Holt. Holt is 0 for 2. He's done the same thing twice. It's ground out to second base. Oh, I think I get it now. They yeah. put up. They put up like four people. Right. It, I, I bet you it's, it's Andy Brickley, Jack Edwards from the game today, from the hockey game. Yeah, it'd be you and me, and Jenny. So there'll be uh, three, three bucks. of us. But no, but then there's a the fourth. There's Adam and Jameson. Who okay. I think they're hosting tonight. Okay. In the air to left field, turning around is Pierce, and he goes back to make the catch. He almost spun around the wrong way, but he makes the grab out there for the second out. He's actually made a couple of pretty nice plays out there in left field tonight. Don Promo. IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida, Jerry, has trained some of the world's top athletes. Now it's your turn. Go to Nesson.com slash IMG for your chance to win a free week of youth sports camp. Two outs in the inning for Johnny Gomes. Gomes fly to right in the first. Struck out swinging in the third. <laughs> 
Strike one, one and one. 94 miles an hour that time from Gosman, who has displayed that fastball from time to time here tonight. Jackie Bradley Jr. waits on deck. John Farrell was talking about putting together a lineup for the Red Sox uh, this season in in a perfect world he would like to keep the first five guys in a constant position and that being Pedroia hitting second Ortiz hitting third of course a lot depends on David and how quickly he's able to come back. A big swing and a miss for Gomes that will end the inning a one two three inning for Gozman he was very good two one Baltimore on top at the end of five. Red Sox Spring Training Baseball in Nesson is brought to you by Jordan's Furniture. Jordan's is your official beauty rest headquarters and official furniture store of the Boston Red Sox. Well, we head into the top half of the sixth inning with the Orioles on top, two to one. And a new pitcher for the Red Sox, fourth of the night, Andrew Miller into the game for Boston. Last year, 53 appearances for the tall lefty, three and two with a 3.35 earned run average. 51 strikeouts, 20 walks, and Plummets hit under 200 against him at 194 against Andrew Miller. Takes over for Andrew Bailey, who worked a shutout inning but had to work hard for it as the Orioles had the bases loaded, but he got out of the jam on two hits with a walk and a K. Red Sox in the game have eight strikeouts. Felix Dubron started the game, first three innings at five Ks. Russ Kanzler leads it off here for Baltimore in the sixth inning. Grounder left side. Suriaco just into the game. It's short. Just throws in time for out number one. Pedro Suriaco coming in at shortstop for the Red Sox. Takes over for Jose Iglesias. Danny Valencia batting with one out in the sixth inning. Jenny Dell standing by with Johnny Gomes. Jenny. Johnny, a few weeks into spring training here, three weeks till opening day. Do you feel the adjustment period of becoming a Red Sox player is finally over? Yeah, I think so. You know, I mean, not exactly a job job interview, you know, but at the same time, you know, just getting to know this ballpark, you know, getting to know, you know, everyone's tendencies on the base, you know, guys hitting in front of you, guys hitting behind you. Uh, things are moving well, and I'm happy. 
You've been said to be a clubhouse guy. That word has been following you around, I'm sure. How important is it to have someone in the, in the clubhouse that's a leader as you are? Well, um, I'm just biased to those guys that I had in my, my clubhouse in the past. You know, the veterans, you know, the good guys, the guys that, you know, helped groom me. And, um, you know, I owe a lot of my success to those guys. So for me to give back, you know, is uh, the least I could do. You're bringing the chemistry to the Red Sox clubhouse, that's for sure. Thank you, Johnny. Yeah, you got it. Well, no doubt that reputation has preceded him here to Boston. Last year, the Oakland A's who got to the postseason to a man said their leader was Johnny Gomes, a guy who only had one at bat during the ALDS, but uh, certainly had a very good year for him and for them. And the same was said about him in his time with Cincinnati and, of course, with the Tampa Bay Rays. And their turnaround, he was a big part of that. The Rays got to the World Series in 2008. Beaten by the Philadelphia Phillies. 1 0 is in there for strike one and one. Andrew Miller making his sixth appearance of the spring. Each appearance has been one inning long. And he got a little trim since the last time we saw him. Yes. He's trimmed up the uh, hair a little bit. It was getting pretty long, it was a little unruly. Miller has two quick outs here in the sixth inning, dealing with Yamiko Navarro. There's a 2 1. Missing for ball three, three and one. Kind of in the, sort of a bob now. <laughs> a bob? Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Look, kind of like a bob. <laughs> Look at the back. Look at the back. It's one fouled off to the right out of play. What do you watch that? You watch that channel that has all the uh, style on it. You know what not to wear and no. how to cut your hair and no makeovers and all that stuff. No, no. I'm a big Food Network guy. The Food Network or, or the Travel Channel. Anthony Bourdain, oh, big yeah. Anthony Bourdain fan. You like the Travel Channel? I like it a lot. Yeah, it's good. Places that I'll never go. Three, two, fouled back and out of play. I used to like that show a long time ago, the one with uh, Robin Leach. Uh, Was that his rich name? And Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Lifestyles of yes. the Rich and Famous. Yeah. Always dreamed to be rich yeah. and famous. Caviar dreams. Yeah, that was a great show. See how the other people, see how the other side lives, yeah. you know? And now look at you. Yeah. You yeah. make all yeah. that money yeah. and... He's got no show anymore. <laughs> Just in time for you to be on the show and it's gone. I don't think I'm ready for the show. Two down in the sixth inning, you might go Navarro battling Andrew Miller. Orioles holding on to a 2 1 advantage as they bat here in the top half of the sixth inning. Here's a 3 2. And a swing and a miss. Got it right by him at 95. Pretty good velocity for Andrew Miller. A 1 2 3 sixth inning with two Ks. 2 1 Orioles.
Be there for the opening homestand of the 2013 season as the Baltimore Orioles visit Fenway Park for a three-game series starting with the home opener April 8th through April 11th. The action continues April 12th through Marathon Monday on the 15th when the Sox battle Tampa Bay. Get your tickets for these great matchups at RedSox.com slash tickets. Well, tonight, Jerry Felix Dubron works three innings and has five Ks. Had a good curveball working for him in this game tonight. Also, a couple of good change-ups. We take a look at the strikeouts for Dubron. Change-up there going down and away. Another off-speed pitch for a strikeout. The high fastball. Good curveball down in the dirt. And another good breaking ball from Dubron for the strikeouts. So we play along to the bottom of the sixth inning and Brackley try that again. Jackie Bradley Jr. Comes in here to face the new pitcher. Mike Belfiore into the game for the O's. Belfiore last year in the minors 40 appearances five and one with a 2.71 earned run average. 78 strikeouts 26 walks. Bradley Jr. to lead it off as he takes a ball high. Bradley Jr. with a walk in the first inning, a single in the third, has been aboard twice. Guzman did a pretty good job tonight for the Orioles in his three innings of relief, gave up two hits, no runs, didn't walk anybody, and struck out three. Now Belfiore into the game. Let's skip that one into the dirt. It's two and one. Multiple changes here for the Orioles. We get you caught up as soon as we can on uh, their defensive changes. Ground ball right side. Romero at second base throws to first for the out. I've been catching up on some of your tweets tonight. Let's check in with Jenny Dell. Yeah, Don, we asked earlier as Red Sox fans, which opposing player do you have respect for? And Adam tweeted us. He said, as a Red Sox fan living in New York, I've always respected Derek Jeter. He plays hard. He's the Yankees captain for a reason. David Ross actually I spoke with him earlier. He agreed. He said Jeter is an ultimate professional. Don and Jerry, I would say 95% of the tweets that I got asking that question all said Derek Jeter. Well, that's a good choice, I think. Yeah. You know, well, we talked about Rivera. And uh, certainly Derek Jeter, a guy that uh, has conducted himself in a professional manner since the first day that he stepped foot on, the, on a baseball field, has put up some incredible numbers for the Yankees, and uh, he is a guy that you certainly do respect. And he's respected by all players around Major League Baseball, too, not just his teammates, but everybody in baseball. And that tells me a lot, too, when you take a look at who the players choose as the most respected People across the diamond and Mariano Rivera certainly has been that guy. Derek Jeter has been that guy. 1 1 to Napoli, you'll miss. I think David Ortiz has been that guy for the Red Sox. Yes. For other teams looking across the diamond. Three and one to Mike Napoli. Napoli tonight has grounded into a fielder's choice and flied out to center field. He is 0 for 2. Already a couple of spring training home runs for Napoli. A big swing and a miss there. He was thinking home run. Full count. Every swing that Napoli takes looks like he's thinking home run. A swing and a miss there. He strikes out as Belfori able to get him for the second out of the sixth inning. Up and away that time from Napoli to pick up the strikeout. Mike 0 for 3 on the night as he reaches for that uh, fastball up and away. So two down in the sixth inning for Jared Saltalamacchia. is one for two. Jared struck out swinging in the second inning, single to center in the fourth. And fouls the first offering off. Oh, 
It's now eight in a row retired by Orioles pitching. And swung at a foul tip, 0 and 2. 25 home runs a year ago for Jared Saltalamakia. He's sharing time this year with David Ross, the veteran who comes to the Red Sox from Atlanta. That's quickly through the left side in the left field, a base hit. Two out single for Jared Saltalamakia, who's two for three in the game tonight. As Saltalamakia switching around to the right side of the plate this time, a two for three night. Strikeout back in the second, and base hits in the fourth, and now here in the sixth. Top spin line drive. Quickly gets through that left side. So two down, Saltalamaki at first base, and Will Middlebrooks is the batter. He walked and scored the only Red Sox run of the second inning. This is line to center, and that's going to get in for a base hit. Trayvon Robinson is playing great deep out there in center field, and that one gets in for a hit. First and second now with two down. And Middlebrooks was not going to take any chances that time, but called on on a strike that he did not like back in the fourth inning, and he jumps on the very first pitch he sees. Line drive to center field, so with two outs, Red Sox get a couple of base runners. Drew Sutton in the run at first base for Middlebrooks. And will likely take over at third base. As Middlebrook's night is over. On base twice tonight, a walk in the second inning and a single here in the sixth now. Here's Ryan Carp with two outs and two on. One fouled off to the left and out of play. Lyle Overbay pinch running for Jared Saltalamakia, who's single. With two outs in the inning, so that's the night for Salty. Overbay at second, Sutton at first, both pinch running. In there for strike two to Ryan Carp. Former Seattle Mariner who can play first base, play the outfield. And tonight is the DH batting seventh for Boston. Swing and a miss, and Carp strikes out to end the inning. And yeah, the Red Sox strand a pair. We are through six from JetBlue Park at Fenway South, 2 1 Orioles.
Red Sox Spring Training Baseball on Nesson is presented to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Through six here, JetBlue Park. It is two to one, Baltimore on top of Boston. As we play into the top half of the seventh inning, the Red Sox with a host of changes. Pitch down and in for ball two, two and zero. Oh. Drew Sutton stays in the game, takes over at third base for the Red Sox. Lyle Overbay now at first base for Boston. Daniel Butler in the game. Salt Lamaki had done for the night, and the pitcher is Terry Doyle, who is into the game for Boston. This one is chopped foul outside of third. He was born in Salem, New Hampshire, resides in Warwick, Rhode Island. Last season at AAA, 12 appearances, 6 and 3, with a 2.83 earned run average. 2004 graduate of Salem High School in Salem, New Hampshire. Led the school to the New Hampshire State Championship as a junior. Graduate of Boston College. Double major in education and math. Played four seasons for the Eagles. Ground ball to shortstop. There's Siriaco. One down in the seventh inning. Well, the Bruins return to action Monday night here on Nesson. You won't want to miss a second of the action as the Bees travel north to face off against the Ottawa Senators. Every division battle is a big one, and the Bees will look to take their second straight game from Ottawa. They beat in overtime 10 days ago. Don't miss the Bruins and Sens Monday night here on Nesson. And the Bruins winners this afternoon, 3 0 over the Flyers. Playing very good hockey. One down in the seventh inning for Alexei Casilla. Actually, Casilla has been hit for here. This is Moren who took over at shortstop. This is to right field, and Myers there to make the catch in right. Actually, Pridey who flies out to right field. Somebody fly out to right, Jerry. <laughs> I, think it was. I think it was Friday. It was. Okay. Two down in the seventh. Trayvon Robinson batting for the first time. In a row retired by Red Sox pitching. Andrew Miller had an impressive one, two, three, sixth inning with two strikeouts. And as Terry Doyle works the seventh inning for Boston. Doyle pitch for Yarmouth Dennis. The Cape Cod League while in college at Boston College. He's fouled off at the dish, evens a count of two and two. Doyle spent uh, time with the Twins and White Sox organizations in 2012 before going to Japan. Chop towards second base, Jonathan Diaz. It's a first for the out that ends the top of the seventh inning. Seventh inning stretch with the Orioles on top of the Red Sox, two to one.
Red Sox spring training baseball on Nesson is brought to you by Jordan's Furniture. Jordan's is your official beauty rest headquarters and official furniture store of the Boston Red Sox. Real nice night here tonight at JetBlue Park at Fenway South and many more games here on Nesson from spring training. A look at the schedule coming up. we we'll with you tomorrow for Port Charlotte. Red Sox and Rays getting underway at 1 o'clock and then home against Minnesota, home against Tampa Bay, home against Philadelphia on the 21st and Pittsburgh Saturday the 23rd. We will travel to Clearwater, take on the Phillies the 24th and back here at JetBlue Park on the 28th and 30th. And then we'll be headed to New York for an off day in New York and then opening day at uh, Yankee Stadium for the Red Sox and the Yankees to get the 2013 campaign underway and then Red Sox would go from New York to Toronto and then home to Fenway Park. Mitch Meyer leading it off. Meyer one for two tonight he doubled in the second inning lined out to short in the fourth inning. Field deep and straight away on Meyer, the former Kansas City Royal outfielder. Belfiore in there for a strike two and one. Belfiore coming in in the sixth inning, back out there for the seventh. They had two strikeouts in the sixth inning. And a breaking ball that is lying promptly into right center field. Robinson over to play it. Meyer stopped about quarter of the way to second base. He was thinking about it. Pulls it up with a single. Nice job hanging in on the breaking ball that time by Mitch Meyer. Lefty against lefty. He gets that to breaking ball and he's able to keep the front shoulder in and pick up the line drive base hit to center field. Hazel Baker pinch running at first base for Meyer. Here's Pedro Siriaco. Jose Iglesias in this spot had been 0 for 2 in the game tonight. Batting out of the number 9 spot. Grounding out to short, grounding out to second. Siriaco last year in 76 games. Didn't begin the year with Boston, but into 76 for the year in its entirety. And Sox a lead runner on for the second time in seven innings. Siriaco the swing and a miss and an 0-2 pitch strikes out. Third strikeout for Belfiore. We're going to send it down to Jenny for some legendary news. That's right, Don. We wanted to share with the fans at home an exclusive look outside the Red Sox clubhouse here at JetBlue Park. So the Sox put up a large piece of artwork then wrapped around the bullpen fence that says legendary. It has a photo of 13 legendary Red Sox players. But somebody, somebody from the team put up a full-size color photograph of third base coach Brian Butterfield on the open space to the left of these legendary lineup legends here. And it was Jim Rice autographed his photo. He turned 60 yesterday. Brian Butterfield, clearly the newest addition to this banner. Well, it's his 56th birthday today. Don and Jerry, I don't know who did that. Do you have any ideas? I saw some folks standing around it when I went out. I don't want to name names. Did you really? Yes, I, I did. I saw some folks. You know, it, was, it was funny because I, I got to the ballpark today and I walked by it the first time, didn't notice it. <laughs> and then I was going back to the clubhouse and I did notice it. And I yes. said, who in the heck put that up there? I saw it done the other day. I was here when it happened, but I don't want to name names. But he is a legend already. He's only been here, what, almost a month now. And he's been working very hard with the base runners on a daily basis. They've been working on signs the last couple of days. We've been able to watch a lot of stuff that Brian Butterfield has been orchestrating prior to games. Yeah, we've got a lot of good information. 
So it was more than one guy that yes, uh, put multiple. that sign up. Yes. Multiple guys. This one fouled back, and it's two and one. Strike two, two and two. Jonathan Diaz batting here with one out and one on in the Boston seventh inning. Diaz took over at second base for Brock Holt, who started the game, was 0 for 3. Sliced foul off to the right, and it's still two and two. I would have to guess Pedroia would have been uh, one of the guys in that group. I did not see him. You didn't see him? No. He went around and Diaz strikes out. That is the fourth strikeout for Belfiore since coming into this game and the second of the seventh inning, two down. Now we've seen a lot of strikeouts uh, tonight on breaking balls. The curveball again. And uh, that ball uh, down. Uh, they call a swing on Diaz. Diaz did not think that he did swing, but by that angle, it does appear that he did. And the correct call made by Timmons, the home plate umpire. Two down, Hazel Baker at first base, and here is Juan Carlos Linares. That's for the first time. Took over for Johnny Gomes in left field. Gomes had been 0 for 3 tonight with a couple of strikeouts. Here's strike one to Linares. Last year, 58 games in Double A Portland. 52 games in Pawtucket. Signed by the Red Sox as a free agent. Back in 2010, Hazel Baker goes. The throw is going to be close and in time. Got him. Nice throw from behind the plate from Josh Hill. So caught stealing is Hazel Baker to end the inning. We're through seven. Baltimore has a 2 1 advantage. Training baseball in Nesson is brought to you by the new Cape Flyers summer weekend train service from Boston to Hyannis. Getting to the Cape has never been so easy. For information, go to capeflyer.com or call 508 775 8504. One more look at that play at second base. It looked like from the naked eye that maybe Hazel Baker was safe, but the replay will show he's clearly out. The tag comes up on the shoulder before the foot gets to the bag. So a good call. By the second base umpire. Nolan Reimold still in the game for the O's. 
Reimold has reached on a fielder's choice, singled and struck out. He's driven in a run. As Terry Doyle returns to the hill for the Red Sox. Sox have seen three innings from Felix Dubrant. He gave up the two runs the Orioles have on five strikeouts, four hits. Joel Hanrahan had a one, two, three inning. With two strikeouts, Andrew Bailey went an inning with a strikeout and a walk. Andrew Miller went an inning, two Ks. So the Red Sox are wrapping up the Ks tonight. Total of 10 strikeouts for Red Sox pitching. Two, two to Rymel. There's strike three and strikeout number 11 on the night for Red Sox pitching. Now Doyle wearing out the inside part of the plate and uh, Rymo's at bat here as he goes back inside with that two seam fastball to pick up the strikeout. The well, Sox fans want to remind you to use the power of social media to know where your team will be all season long. Use your mobile device now and scan the code that's on your TV screen to download the complete. 2013 Red Sox schedule. Nesson and Nesson.com have made it never easier to keep your socks on all summer. This is a bullet into center field. A ringing single for Travis Ishikawa. <laughs> Ishikawa at first base with one out. And LJ Hose coming up. You know, I can read the games on that uh, the way it is right you there. You can see the schedule in the. Uh, I can see the, I can see the schedule. I don't need my phone right. to see that. I can <laughs> see the schedule as it is, right here. But the flip phone did not work. We got to get you an app. Maybe maybe that should be a goal of mine before the season starts to get a updated phone. phone. I don't think I could use it though. You'd be surprised. I mean, you get around a computer pretty good, and you didn't start all that well on a computer. I don't get around that great. I mean, I, I get much, the sites that I know, you know, how to get to. And it's much better than it used to be. Every time we would check into a hotel on the road, myself or Mike Narachi would have to go to your room to figure out how to get the Wi-Fi on for you. <laughs> didn't matter what time of night it was. The one pitch will miss up and in. I still have difficulties in some still places. To this day? Yeah. But I don't know. Maybe I should get... Uh, the problem is my wife won't let me get it. You know why? Because she gets mad because I never have my phone on. Right. So she won't. Why? Why would I get a new phone? That's going to be her response. So there's. I got no chance. If she says no, the answer is no. What about my iPad? I just go. What do you think of that? I like that. In the air to center field. Jackie Bradley Jr. going back onto the base of the track to make the catch just shy of it. Let me ask you a question. If you sure. go when you go on the road now. Yes. Do you have to take uh, your computer also or just the iPad? I'm going to take the computer still on the road for the room, but I'm going to take the iPad to the park with me every day because it's smaller. So but that'll come could, with me in my bag. Could you go on the road with just the iPad itself? I probably could, but then I can't really do documents and Word stuff, you know. I probably could figure out how to do it, but I don't know how to do it right now. So my computer is. So you're going to be taking two. Yeah. I take things on all the kinds of devices with me. Yeah. Sure. Two of those, a Blackberry. I mean, there's a lot of stuff coming with me. You got a lot of stuff. You do really. This is the third base. <laughs> Sutton's throw is in time. But thankfully, this conversation is over. We head to the bottom of the eighth inning with the Orioles on top two to one.
Red Sox Spring Training Baseball in Nesson is brought to you in part by Bob's Discount Furniture. You score extreme quality choice and value at Bob's Discount Furniture in store and online at mybobs.com. A tight game tonight here at Jet Boot Park at Fenway South as we head to the bottom of the eighth inning. Sweet Caroline wrapping up here, even down here at Jet Blue Park. Nice layout done. Very I'm nice. Out. I'm letting them hear it. Get a little flavor of the park tonight here in the bottom of the eighth. Zach Clark into the game for the Orioles. Nobody lays out better than me, Jerry. Oh, that was that was excellent. 28 appearances for Clark last year in the minor leagues, 15 and 7 with a 2.79 earned run average. I once had a boss tell me that uh, the best thing I do is when I don't speak. <laughs> this is <laughs> on the ground foul outside of third. <laughs> I was mildly offended. <laughs> but I was told I was really good at it. But that's easy to do, though. I mean, uh, think about it. You keep yeah. a job a long time if that's the best thing you can do. Don't speak. Don't speak. But I'm an announcer, and that's kind of offensive. No one pitch is on the ground to shortstop. Moran is there. His throw in time for the first out as Linares is retired here in the eighth. Seven sports, 450 acres. IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida is giving you the opportunity to train like a pro. Go to Nesson.com slash IMG for your chance to win a free week of youth sports camp. One out in the eighth inning for Jackie Bradley Jr. Walked in the first inning, singled in the third, and grounded out in the sixth. Well, the Red Sox would like to have a big inning. I mean, the home games for the Red Sox recently, they have not done much scoring. Here at the JetBlue Park at Fenway South. Only one run in the ball game so far tonight. One hopper to first base. Picked down there by Ishikawa, who tags the bag for the second out of the eighth inning. So two way in the eighth, and Daniel Butler coming up. 26 year old catcher came into the game last inning. Butler last year spending time at Portland and Pawtucket. 73 games with the Sea Dogs, 22 with the Paw Sox. Signed by the Red Sox as a non-drafted free agent. Back in 2009. From Phoenix, Arizona. Kind of changed his mind in the middle, but goes around one and one. Yeah, totally fooled on that pitch. Uh, expecting a fastball, did not get it. Got a breaking ball and uh, could not stop the swing. Zach Clark in the game here for the Orioles, their fourth pitcher of the day. Seen Bundy, Gausman, Belfiore, and now Clark. 2 1. That's a strike. 2 and 2. Butler will pop it up. Ishikawa at first base. On the dirt of the infield and a step now onto the grass in the outfield to make the catch that ends the inning. Red Sox go in order. We're through eight with the Orioles on top two to one.
Two to one the Orioles have the lead as we head to the ninth inning. The Orioles got the scoring started in the first inning. The second batter of the game is Lou Ford with Alexei Casilla at second base. The line went into right field for a base hit and scored Casilla to put the Orioles on top one to nothing. Red Sox would score their first run and tie the game in the second inning on an error. Right field committed by Connor Jackson. As Mitch Meyer sent it into right field for a double, but miscue down there allows Will Middlebrooks to score the game tying run. But the O's were back at it again as the Orioles get a base hit from Nolan Reimold in the third inning. It scores Luis Exposito, and the Orioles took the 2 1 lead. That was in the third. There has been no scoring since, and we head into inning number nine. Newman Romero leading it off. And he lines one into left field for a base hit. Linares over to play it on the backhand, but a single for Romero to begin things here in the ninth inning. Well, see how Buck Showalter plays this year late in the ball game, one run lead. See if he sacrifices, try to get him in in a scoring position at second base. Adrian Marin coming up here for the Orioles. A couple of options either the bunt, maybe the hit and run. Inside to Marin, and it's one and one. Terry Doyle back on the mound here for the Red Sox. His third inning of relief, but in since the seventh. <laughs> Flared foul off to the right, and it's one and two. Two runs, seven hits, and error for the O's. A run, six hits, and no errors for the Red Sox. Back to the mound. Doyle. High throw to second base. It ends up into center field. Run down by Diaz. His throw to third is late. So a chance there for a double play for the Red Sox. Instead, everybody is safe on an errant throw. And it happens quite often, too, when pitches are throwing uphill. They get that ball, and they're throwing uphill on the mound, and the ball just takes off on them. And it took up, took off uh, up over the head of Suriaco. He's got a good bounce. Now he's throwing uphill, and the ball just takes off on Suriaco in the center field. So now first and third with nobody out. Those are drills uh, that the pitches have been working on consistently day in and day out. So runners at the corners with nobody out. And here's Jose Heal who stands in on the right side his first at bat of the night. To the right, evens accounted one and one. Well, that's a daily tonight following our coverage of spring training baseball tonight. Orioles threatening for more as they try to add on to a one run advantage here in the top half of the ninth inning. Foul back one and two. Mm 
Two and two now to heal. Coming into this inning, Doyle had given up just one hit in his first two innings of work. And retired six out of the seven batters that he had faced, but a base hit and an error. It's now first and third, nobody out. And a pitch in tight is full count now, three and two. Red Sox uh, in the middle of the infield playing back for the double play. This regular season probably would not be the case at all. Especially in a one run ball game this late. J.D. Durbin warming again for the Red Sox in the pen. He had been warming up very early in the game and now back up again. As Doyle runs into some trouble here in the ninth. This one fouled off earlier in the inning. You were calling for a hit and run or some other combination to try to get another run here for the Orioles. Why do you think there's not more situational baseball in spring training? I think maybe just trying to get guys at bats, you know, instead of uh, playing games and, you know, sacrificing and hitting, and running and stuff like that. I think managers prefer they get a guy that doesn't have a lot of at bats, maybe just let him swing away. But uh, I think if this was a regular season game, it surely would have been played differently than what it has been this inning. And strike three to heal. And the first out, Doyle needed that. One down. His second K. You know, regular season now, you would expect something uh, possible squeeze play. A possible steal of second base, uh, a lot of different things right now that uh, could bring across that extra important run. My thinking was that if you're not going to do it in spring training, I mean, it seems like a perfect time to try some of this stuff before the season starts. Yeah, you're right. I'd, I'd be doing everything. All uh, kinds of stuff. Yeah, let's I, go. <laughs> <laughs> no one down, first and third. Friday getting his second at bat. He flied to right field in the seventh inning. See, I would squeeze right now. Right, right now. now. Right now, I would put the squeeze on. 1 0 -oh count, 1 out. You love the squeeze, though. I, mean, I love the, for the squeeze. squeeze all the time the during the regular Just season. It excites me. Into deep center field. Jackie Bradley Jr. going back is going to be over his head and one hop the wall. Romero will score. Moren being waved around. Throw from a double pump out there in center field he is not going to be in time. Two runs in for the Orioles, who take a 4 1 lead. Now, see if I put the squeeze on, I only would have got one run. But by swinging away, Buck Walter gets two runs out of it. This ball hit very hard by Friday. See the ball tail away out there from uh, Jackie Bradley Jr. One hop up against the wall and two big runs come across for the Orioles here in the ninth inning and still nobody out in the inning. Excuse me, Don, one out. The strikeout. Forgot about the strikeout. Trayvon Robinson, the batter here with. Runner at second base and the pitch up high for ball one. Robinson grounded out to second base in the seventh inning in his first at bat. So he took over in center field. Well, tomorrow I'll be with you tomorrow afternoon from Port Charlotte, the home of the Tampa Bay Rays. Everybody's set your clocks ahead so you don't miss tomorrow's game, and that includes us. And yeah, we've already done it. <laughs> yeah, but there's no guarantee on the alarm clock. That's the only thing I'm nervous about. On the ground, left side, and it's Siriaco's throw. And keeping his foot on the bag nicely was Overbay. Nice job for the second out of the inning. Taking third base is Pridey with two down. And a couple of nice plays. First of all, a defensive play by Siriaco to get the out at first base. And good base running by Pridey at second. Once uh, Siriaco let that ball loose, he knew he had no problem getting to third base. And he did. And Siriaco having it tough as Sutton was cutting, cutting in front of him. And nice stretch by Ova Bay at first base to uh, record the second out of the inning. 
Left two down for Xavier Avery, who's coming up here for the Orioles. This has been Nolan Reimold's spot, the DH spot, and Reimold was one for four with an RBI single. Yeah, right now it's 10:29. Uh, if it's 10:29, it was our tomorrow. World. It'd be 10:29. Right. Doyle falling behind 2-0 to Avery. On the corner for strike one, two and one. Seems like every year it becomes daylight savings time. We have a night game followed by a road game. Somewhere else the next day. Somewhere else. It's not every home. Year. It's on the road somewhere. To center field and falling fast. That'll drop in for a base hit and will score. Friday from third base to put Baltimore on top. Five to one. Now Doyle has been out there a long time tonight. He had a very good seventh and eighth inning, but the error really hurt him here in the ninth. His own error throwing to second base. First base number 45, Travis Ishikawa. Travis Ishikawa coming up his second at bat. He singled into center field in the eighth. Another at bat here in the ninth inning. A three run inning so far for the Orioles. Ishikawa is it sharply to the backhand. Suriako's long throw from short there in plenty of time. Nicely done to end the inning. Well, the Red Sox last at bat coming up here. They've got four runs they trail by. to the bottom of the ninth inning the Orioles have a 5-1 lead what are the chances of the two guys on the left being brothers I think pretty good that's on to the last half of the ninth inning while Overbay will be leading it off here for the Red Sox in the last of the ninth Overbay getting his first at bat he pinch ran Earlier in the game took over at first base 65 games between Arizona and Atlanta last year for Overbay. Former Toronto Blue Jay leading things off. Drew Sutton in behind him waiting on deck. It's 
Zach Clark back on the mound and delivers strike one to Lyle Overbay. There's Sutton waiting on deck. Very close pitch. And it's one and two. That field deep and straight away on Lyle Overbay. That's a fly ball to left field. Pose going back towards the corner, and that'll be off the wall. The second base goes over Bay. And Hose gets it back into the infield, but a double to get things started here in the ninth. Well, that one spot in the Red Sox lineup tonight between Salt Lamacchia and Overbay has been a good spot. Three hits coming out of there. Two singles and now the double. Scraping that left field wall. So those runs look very, very big for the Orioles right now. Runner at second base to get it started. Here is Drew Sutton. Sutton will send one down the left field line, but this one's headed foul. So in Pittsburgh and Tampa Bay a year ago, 42 games for Sutton, a 254 average. With the Red Sox in 2011 in 31 games, hit a 315 for Boston. Ground ball towards second base. Romero to the backhand, plants and throws in time to get Sutton. Overbay takes third base with one out in the ninth. Moro Gomez coming up here. Gomez batting in the spot of Mike Carp, who had been 0 for 3 in the game tonight. Gomez takes ball one. Andy Evans has been spending a lot of time with Terry Doyle. Works uh, three innings tonight for the Red Sox. Touch for some runs in the ninth inning. Costly error that he committed in that inning after two shutout innings. Running the Orioles to score three times. One one to Moro Gomez. In there for strike two. 37 games last year for Gomez in a Red Sox uniform, making his major league debut last year for Boston. Hazel Baker waiting on deck behind him. Breaking ball grounded foul. Two and two. Trayvon Robinson, the center fielder for the Orioles, step or two towards right center. Good size gap out in left center field. In the dirt, nicely blocked by Heel to his right. With Overbay just 90 feet away. He'll expecting the breaking ball that time and of course uh, that ball will tend to come back toward the catcher as he slides to his right. Shakes off the breaking ball wants the fastball. 
Gomez grounds it left side to third base. Britton will fire across for the second out as Overbay comes in to score for the Red Sox to make it a 5 2 game. Gomez grounding out for the second out here of the ninth, but the Red Sox grab their second run. Jeremy Hazel Baker coming up for Boston. We're two down, and the base is now empty. Hazel Baker, 25 years of age, a fourth round pick in 2009, entering his fifth pro season. Hazel Baker, one of those guys that uh, played all outfield positions for the Red Sox here in spring training. Get a lot of uh, getting a lot of playing time here early. See him in left field, see him in right field. I understand that Cal Ripken is going to be joining us tomorrow. Is a children's book coming out? And he'll be throwing out the first pitch in tomorrow's game. One one pitch coming to Hazel Baker. Ground ball towards shortstop. Marin will fire across for the out that will end the ball game. So the Red Sox do get a run in the ninth inning, but drop this one five to two. As the Orioles come away with a victory. 5 2 the final. Bailey, Mariano Rivera set to make a big announcement from Yankees camp in Tampa. We'll have it for you. Plus, a brouhaha breaks out at the World Baseball Classic, and Sox reliever Alfredo Aceves, he's right in the thick of it. We'll show you what happened. And the Bruins take care of the Flyers at the Garden. Highlights, reaction. And an amazing stat involving Chris Kelly. Nessa Daly, coming up next.